Hi there, I'm Kath. Thank you very much for tuning in to my channel, Made by Cathcraft. And if you're new to my channel, then welcome. Thank you very much for checking it out. Um, on my channel, I love to talk about all things dressmaking related. So sewing patterns, sewing hacks, um, different fabrics, and I'm gradually sewing my way towards a handmade wardrobe. So I'd love it if you'd join me on that journey by um, subscribing to my channel and checking out my vlogs. And today's vlog is a um, autumn sewing plans and fabric haul vlog. Um, I really love autumn weather, it's such a nice time of year I think to get planning for some slightly cosier clothes and dresses with tights and layering up different options so I've got some really nice fabrics and plans to share with you. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, but first of all, um, let me share with you what I'm wearing today. So autumn has really arrived here, I think in the south of England. It's definitely gone a bit cold here and I've got some tights on today so yeah, I think definitely autumn is here. And um, today I am wearing um, one of my favourite dresses, this kind of in-between weather where it's kind of getting a bit chillier but it's not super duper cold. And it's this dress here. It is the Darling Rangers dress by Megan Nielsen and it's a really lovely kind of classic shirt dress. Um, yeah, it's one of my favourites. I do love a Megan Nielsen pattern. And um, I'll show you the line drawings. This is kind of the version I've made. It's quite, yeah, quite a classic shirt dress with a gathered skirt, a button down front and a v-neck. And then the arms um, are kind of just above the elbow length and are finished with an elasticated cuff. And there are, there's also an option for kind of a um, boxy type shirt or a more kind of boxy tunic dress too that hasn't got any darts. Um, so yeah, those are the three options. But this is the option I've made. So this is my version. I've made two versions of this dress actually, and this is the first one I made. And I made it in this really lovely um, chambray. It's an art gallery chambray that I got from Minerva, and I think it's still in stock there. So I'll include a link down below um, to that. But yeah, it's really lovely. I'll stand up so I can show you the print. It's got these really cute little flowers on in different pastel colours, kind of a mint green and a sort of pinky colour. And then I had fun with the buttons down the front. I chose these little pinky um, flower buttons. So it's got a tie on the back, cinch chin. So yeah, it's a really nice pattern. It's got a really good size range too. There are two size ranges available. Um, there's one from size zero to size 20. And then the Megan Nielsen curve range is available from size 14 to size 30. But yeah, it's a really um, lovely shirt dress. I'll put a picture up of me wearing it. Um, one thing I did do with this pattern, actually, which I, don't, which I don't often do, is I made a twirl before I made this dress because I wasn't sure about the fitting around the bodice. And I'm really glad I did make the twirl because I did have to make some adjustments on this pattern for my body shape. Um, I found that it came up a little bit too tight around the shoulders. So I did a broad shoulder adjustment on it and I just had a little play around with the darts. It's got darts here just to um, yeah, fit around my body shape nicely. So I'm glad I made a twirl because I think it fits pretty well now and I've gone on to make one more version. So yeah, it's just a great one for this time of year with tights um, and then a cardio on top of it gets a bit cooler. That is um, the Megan Nielsen Darling Ranges. But now let me move on to my autumn sewing and plans. So the first um, item I wanted to share with you as part of my autumn sewing plans is actually a new pattern I got this month. And um, yeah, I was quite excited to get a new pattern actually, because I haven't actually bought too many patterns this year. I've mostly been um, making things I already have or kind of playing around with them, hacking them a bit. But this is a pattern that actually has been out a while. I don't think it came out this year. It must be older than that. Um, and it's been one that I've had my eye on and I wasn't really sure if it suited me. And then when I was thinking my autumn sewing plans and I'd seen a few lovely versions go by on Instagram, I thought I'll just get it and give it a try and see how I get on with it. And it's this pattern here which is the Wilder Gown by Friday Pattern Co. So yeah, I'm sure you're familiar with this pattern. Um, it's a really popular one. I've seen so many lovely versions, um, but let me tell you a bit about it. It is, so it's designed to be either a dress or a shirt and it's raglan sleeved and um, it's supposed to be a beginner pattern. So it should be quite straightforward to make. And um, the, the really lovely feature it has is this kind of gathered neckline. I think which is made by um, the fabric pieces for the raglan sleeves and the front and back bodice are quite wide. And so you kind of gather it in and then sort of, um, yeah, so gather it with this little sort of bow necktie here, which is a really cute feature. And then you can make it into a gathered skirt. I'll show you the line drawings. Yeah, either as a kind of blouse or a gathered skirt with one tier or two tiers. So yeah, there are a few different options. And another really good thing about this pattern is, um, like with most Friday Pattern Company patterns, it has a really big size range. So it goes from extra small. Well, the paper pattern goes up to 4X, but on Friday Pattern Co's website, you can get this pattern up to 7X. So yeah, it's a really good size range. So um, I'm really looking forward to giving it a go. As I said, I wasn't sure if it was really me. It's kind of smocky and oversized. And a while ago, a while back when I was earlier in my sewing journey, I wasn't really into that sort of look. But now I'm, I'm really enjoying actually that style. So yeah, I'm looking forward to giving it a go. 
So I'm thinking probably I will make a dress version. Um, I'll probably just go for one tier, but I'll probably lengthen this tier slightly because um, it looks like it might come up a little bit short. Um, and I'm not really a big fan of the midi length on me. So yeah, I'm planning to make um, a kind of autumnal version, probably with longer sleeves and um, one tier. So yeah, I'm looking forward to giving it a try and seeing whether it suits me. Um, because I'm not sure about it, I thought I'd make a wearable toile of it first. And I've got some fabric in my stash that I think I'm going to use to um, give that one a try. And you might have seen this fabric before because I got it earlier in the summer. Um, and this is it here. It is a visco chalice fabric, which I got from um, Rainbow Fabrics. Um, and I'll include a link to the website down below. I don't think this fabric is still in stock, but they do stock a lovely range of um, viscose fabrics and other types of fabrics too. So yeah, do check them out. But yeah, it's really lovely. It's quite a weighty viscose. It almost feels like a bit of a crepe texture to it, but I don't think it's actually a viscose crepe. Um, and it's got these sort of different wildflowers on in different colours with a nice black base, which I think will work well for autumn. And um, you might have seen this fabric recently, actually, because I made um, recently a grain line scout tee in this fabric um, for charity. And um, I talked about that top and showed that top in a recent vlog I did, which was a week of sewing and chat. And I'll link that vlog below in case you fancy checking it out. But this fabric was really reasonably priced when I got it from Rainbow Fabrics. I think it was about £4.99 a metre or something. So I think I got three or four metres. So um, on the scout tee, I only used one metre, so I got plenty left for the wild gown. So... Yeah, I'm looking forward to giving it a go um, and seeing how, how it turns out. Um, yeah, should be a fun sew, I think. That's my first plan, um, the wilder gown, a new pattern in this um, lovely kind of floral viscose fabric. See, so yeah, I'll be interested to give that one a go. So the next um, fabric I got to share with you is a new fabric for this month. And um, I, ha I thought with this fabric that if the wilder gown went well in my wearable twirl material, then this fabric might be lovely as a wilder gown. But I thought, um, yeah, I'd give the wearable twirl a go first before I cut into this fabric because this fabric is a bit more expensive and I really love it. So I don't want to make the wrong choice with it. But it's this fabric here. Um, it is an Atelier Brunette fabric, another viscose chalice, and it's called Palmetto in the colour Night. And um, yeah, it's a bit crinkly because I put it in the wash already. Um, and I was good actually. Um, when I have a fabric I really love, I love to treat them extra well. So I overlocked um, the edges, the raw edges, before I put it in the wash to make sure it wouldn't fray. Um, but yeah, it's a super pretty fabric. Um, I got this one from Minerva um, and I'll link it down below. It's got lovely drape. It's such nice quality. Um, it's got a black um, on the back as well. So it's not just printed on. It's, yeah, it must be sort of yarn dye viscose. So it's called Palmetics. It's got these really lovely little sort of palm tree type um, pictures on here in a kind of taupe colour and a kind of orange colour, which I think are really pretty against the base, which is like a really deep, um, it's such a deep navy blue, it almost looks black, but it's a really deep navy blue. I just really love this fabric and I thought it was perfect for autumn. So yeah, I'm going to see how I get on um, with my Toile of the Wilder Gown. And if it goes well, I might see if I can um, whip this one up into the Wilder Gown too. I've got two metres of it, so I should have enough. But my other option with this fabric is another pattern I already have in stock and it's another Megan Nielsen pattern. And it's this one here, which is the Sudley blouse and dress. And um, it's a really lovely pattern for kind of um, woven fabrics. It's kind of a sort of oversized smock st style dress, so similar to the Wilder Gown in that respect. Um, but the um, neck in this one has a really pretty kind of keyhole opening with a little sort of um, tie as well. And I've made a couple of blouses um, in this, this pattern before, but I've never made the dress, ver dress version and I would like to make the dress version. So I think that'd be a great alternative option for this lovely Atelier Brunette fabric. Um, so yeah, um, if you have an opinion on um, which one you think might be better, then do let me know down below because I'm a little bit undecided and it's such pretty fabric that I want to make the right decision to make sure I get a plenty of wear out of it. I know I do like the Sudley, but I'm not sure about the dress version, I've ever tried it. Um, and I like the idea, I think it comes with a line bodice, which I think would be really nice. Um, so yeah, we'll see. But it's lovely fabric and I can't wait to cut into it. And I do want to cut into it soon because I don't want it sitting in my stash and not being worn this autumn. So yeah, that's my um, next plan with this fabric or possible plans with this fabric. So the next um, new fabric purchase I've got to share with you is another one from Minerva. And again, I'll link it down below. And it's one that I'm really in love with, actually. Um, I was looking for a fabric that I wanted to make a kind of layering piece top from. And I came across this fabric and I thought it looked really, really nice. So I thought um, I'd give it a try. And it arrived and I just absolutely adore it. Um, here it is. <laughs> it is a, so it's quite plain fabric, obviously, in this kind of creamy colour. But it is a tensile jersey. And it's called Derby Rib Jersey and it's by Meat Milk. 
and um, I've come across the brand Meat Milk before but I haven't bought any of their fabrics but I've admired them quite a few times because they looked really nice so I thought I'd give them a go and yeah I was, was hoping to find a lovely rib jersey so um, yeah it's got a really nice ribbing detail to it and because it's tensile it's a bit like a viscose jersey it's really drapey but it's also got this really lovely sort of sheen to it almost so yeah it just feels really really nice and I think it's going to be really really lovely to wear and yeah the colour is called Shell um, so yeah, it's kind of a creamy colour and I thought we would go with a lot of items. It was the kind of a colour I was looking for, something that's kind of off-white. Um, but they have some other really lovely colours in too. They've got some really beautiful green. Um, yeah, there were so many colours I was tempted by, but I thought I'd try this one and give it a go and see how it works. Apparently, um, it's got good recovery, so I'll be interested to see how it does wear and, um, and wash and everything. So yeah, I'll let you know how I get on with it. But yeah, it's really, really lovely. It's just so nice to feel, um, yeah, really drapey. And um, I think it's going to be perfect for what I want to make, which is a top from this book here, the Tilly and the Button Stretch Book. One of my favourite tops, which is this one here, the Freya Top. And um, yeah, it's a great layering piece for autumn and winter. It's kind of a close fitting jersey top with this sort of mock neckline. Um, yeah, yes, yeah, so it's close fitting, long sleeved, or you can make a short sleeve version, but I want to make this kind of long sleeve version. So it's basically like a polar neck or um, turtle neck with a slightly lower neck. Um, so yeah, just really, um, I think it'll be really lovely in this fabric and I'm really looking forward to getting this one sewn up. So it's, again, it's quite an expensive fabric, but um, I know that the Freya pattern um, sews up really well and I know the sizing and the fit is all right, so it should be fine making in this fabric here. So I'm really looking forward to um, yeah, making that one up and enjoying layering it for this season. So yeah, that's, that should be quite a quick make really. The Freya top whips up so quickly and um, I've got one and a half metres of this fabric, which should be plenty to make that top. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting that one um, sewn up. Um, yeah, it's just really yummy fabric basically. <laughs> um, and I think the ribbing is quite cool as well and um, yeah, quite now. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. And so what's my next fabric? So the next fabric and plan I've got to share with you is actually not a new fabric. It's one that I've had in my stash. And um, I've just kind of been going through like a bit of a long term project to gradually use up pieces of um, fabric I've got left over from other projects in my stash because I don't have a, a large amount of uncut fabrics. I don't like to kind of um, leave them sitting too long. I like to use them. But I do have quite a few pieces of fabric where I've made something and I've got just enough left to perhaps squeeze another garment out of it. And I've kind of used that fabric to make my daughter a couple of items like little sort of pyjama t-shirts or um, leggings and that sort of thing. So I was carrying on going through that kind of stash of kind of remnants and I came across this fabric here and I thought it would be fun to make something um, for Christmas. So it's a lovely um, cotton jersey fabric with this red base and then stars on it. And um, I bought this ages and ages ago from the Makers Merchant and I don't think it will probably still be in stock there but I'll include a link to the website in case you fancy checking them out because they do have a lovely range of fabrics there. Um, anyway, I, I originally had bought it and planned to make something Christmassy. But then I got a little bit sidetracked and I'd made a wearable toile out um, of using this fabric of the Tabitha dress by Tilly and the Buttons from their Make It Simple book. And I'll put a picture up of that dress um, so you can see it. It's more of a summery dress really and I sort of used it as a wearable toile. Um, but it's really comfy and I've worn it loads and I do like the red colour. But I was looking through my stash and I found and I had just enough left of this I thought to make a t-shirt that I might actually be able to wear over Christmas time. So yeah, I thought that might be a bit of fun. And if I make it now, um, then um, yeah, then I'll have it ready for when it does get Christmassy in a couple of months. So what I'm planning to do is make a top using this pattern here, a t-shirt using this top here, which is the Agnes top by Tilly the Buttons. And it's a really nice um, sort of fitted top for Jersey. Um, and I'll show you the line drawings. You can kind of have fun with little ruchings or just make a kind of plain version. And I kind of want to just make a plain version um, with short sleeves, because I don't think I have enough fabric to make a long sleeve version. So yeah, short sleeve t-shirt. But what I was thinking was, instead of making the scoop neck version, um, I thought I was going to borrow the neckline from another top, which is a free um, um, free top pattern. And this one here is the Mandy Boat Tea pattern by Tasuti Fabrics. And um, I borrowed the neckline from this top quite a couple of times before because it's quite a nice sort of boat neckline. And actually it's a really nice easy sew because you kind of just fold it under um, on the front and the back and then sort of sew it in place with a twin needle. See, so yeah, it comes together really nice to that neckline. It's quite an easy neckline to sew. But the Mandy Boat is quite a boxy top and I've never actually um, made it. And I would like to try making it sometime. I've just always used it just for the boy in the neckline. So I'm planning to make a Agnes t-shirt with more of a boat neck neckline um, in this um, cotton jersey fabric. And hopefully that'll be um, quite cute and um, yeah, nice and Christmassy. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to giving that one a go. I haven't 
made an Agnes top for a while so it's always nice to revisit an old um pattern like a bit like an old friend <laughs> um yeah so that's my plan for this cotton jersey just kind of a fairly quick sew to make a cute little sort of Christmassy t-shirt so my next sewing plan isn't actually a garment of clothing it's actually an item for the home and it's using up another remnant of fabric I have left over from another project and this is the fabric here it is a um, cotton canvas fabric that I got from Minerva um, it's really cute it's got these pine cones on it and it's quite a nice sturdy fabric so perfect for making something for the home and I used this fabric a while ago to make a poof I'm using the free pattern by closet core patterns and I'll put up the poof so you can see it um, it's designed to be a great scrap buster pattern because it uses lots of small pieces of fabric and you can fill it with fabric too um, and yeah, I actually bought a couple of fabrics to make my poof because I wanted to make it to go with the decor in our living room, which is kind of, as you can see, kind of these beigey colours. And yeah, the poof gets a lot of use, but it's quite large. And I also have in my living room a little mini kind of poof that I use as a footstool um, when I'm sitting on the sofa and it doesn't take up too much room, uh, but it's getting really old. Actually, I've got my computer sitting on it here and I'll show you it. Um, yeah, it's really, really old. and It's getting really old. It's got all these kind of um, yeah cracks and tears and things. Um, so yeah, it's getting to the point of kind of yeah, beyond repair. Um, so I want to make myself something to replace it. So I thought I'd use up my leftover fabric from making the big poof to make a mini poof. Um, so I plan for this to kind of be inspired by the closet core pattern, but I'm actually going to draft my own pattern pieces for this one. I don't think I'm going to do the triangles kind of pizza shape with different fabric pieces because it's going to be quite small. So I think I'll just cut like a circle for the top and then I'll probably do a circle for the bottom with a zip so I can kind of um, yeah, easily access it to add more um, sort of stuffing in. So that's my plan. I want to make it a similar size to that um, old one that I want to replace. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if I have enough of this fabric or not, but I checked and they've still got it in stock at Minerva. So if I need more, I can easily get some more of that one. So yeah, that's just a mini um, project that's not a garment based one, but it should be great um, to replace something old with something a little bit um, nicer and with something handmade. So yeah, that's my plan for this fabric and great to use up another um, remnant piece I've got. My next fabric I'm hoping to sew with this autumn is um, one that I've been had for a while in my stash that I've kind of been holding off sewing with it. But I thought if I pop it on this vlog, maybe that'll help me actually kind of make a decision and actually sew it up because it's such a pretty fabric. It seems a shame for it just to be sitting in a pile and not being used. It's a really, really gorgeous viscose fabric. And here it is. I mean, it's the softest viscose fabric ever. It's just so lovely and soft. And it's really pretty. It's got like a navy base, oh, a navy base with these really pretty um, sort of different colours of fl um, little flowers on and kind of a cornflower blue and a pink. And yeah, I think it's really lovely. And I know ditzy floors are quite um, popular at the moment. So I thought it would be nice to sew it up while they're kind of um, in fashion and while I can enjoy it. Um, this fabric came from Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn and it was really reasonably priced. And I think I have two metres of it because I was planning to make some sort of dress. But yeah, it's just so pretty and so soft and I really want to make it. Um, and the I was thinking of making this dress here, which is the Lotta dress by Tilly and the Buttons. Um, it's a really nice dress that you can make in either woven or um, a jersey fabrics. And it's great for drapey fabrics because um, it's got this really lovely swishy skirt. So yeah, it's kind of a sort of boxy kind of um, t-shirt shaped blousy top with an elasticated waist that gathers in and then kind of swishy skirt. And you can add pockets and you can add um, sleeves, but I just kind of want to make a really basic version like this without the pockets and probably not too long because I'm not a big fan of the midi length like I mentioned before. So that's what I was thinking of making for this fabric. I thought they'd be really pretty and I thought if I wore it with tights and a cardigan, it would work for kind of cooler weather too, even though it's quite a lightweight fabric. Um, and yeah, I have two meters, so that should be plenty. I'm just really not sure something is stopping me from cutting into it. Um, I don't know what. And I was wondering if you had any other ideas for it um, that might be better or whether you thought it would work well as a lot of dress. Um, yeah, please help me decide so I can actually get it cut out and sewn up. Um, but yeah, it's just so pretty. It's really lovely and soft and I love the colour. And I've been knitting a um, pink cardigan recently that I think would go really well with this. Um, so yeah, I like the idea of that combination. So yeah, I'd like to get it sewn up. So my next autumn sewing plan is one that I've actually already cut out. So it's definitely happening. Um, and it's another one using um, some leftover fabric I had. Only this one is leftover from a really recent project that I only finished, um, yeah, a week or two ago actually. And it's this really lovely um, viscose chalice fabric that I got from Minerva. Um, and it's a Mind the Maker viscose chalice. Um, it's really lovely. It's kind of a black and it's yarn dyed. So it's got a black base too, which is great. Really nice quality. And it's quite a substantial viscose actually. And it's got these lovely um, gold rings on it too. 
And I used this fabric to make a hack of the Ogden Cami by True Bias, which is this pattern here. I kind of cropped it off and added a gathered skirt to make kind of a wintry pinafore. And I've actually written a blog post talking all about that hack, so I'll include a link to it down below in case you fancy checking it out. But yeah, I really enjoyed making that. And I found um, after I'd finished, I had just enough left of this um, fabric to actually make um, an actual Ogden Cami camisole version, which I thought would be quite cute actually. And I thought, well, it's nice to use the fabric up. Um, so yeah, I'm planning to make this version here. Well, I have cut it out, so I am going to make it. Um, so yeah, I've got it all cut out. Um, here's the front, and I've actually um, sewn the straps already. So there's a little strap, which I made a slightly thicker as well, because I thought I'd be wearing this Ogden cami probably in winter, maybe with some jeans and a turtleneck top or something. So I thought a slightly chunkier strap would suit that kind of wintry vibe better. And I didn't have quite enough fabric for the facing, because the Ogden cami has little kind of facing inside um, that just comes down to about here. And it's a really nice um, little feature, I think. But I didn't have enough of this um, viscose fabric. So um, I found some leftover pieces of cotton lawn in my stash. Here it is. It's just a plain black cotton lawn. And I use that to cut the facing pieces. So yeah, they'll stay stitched um, and ready to all be attached together. I thought that'd be quite a nice, cute little top. Um, I'm not sure how I feel having two garments in my wardrobe that I'll wear at the same time of year in the same fabric, um, but they are quite different. So um, yeah, I'll give it a go and see how I get on. And um, yeah, if it feels a bit weird, I can always probably gift this cami to a friend. So yeah, we'll see how I get on with that one. But I'm looking forward to sewing that one up. And the last fabric um, I have to share with you, um, I haven't got set plans for this one and it's a bit of a naughty purchase because I really don't need it. Um, but you know, sometimes when well, you don't need it, but you just have to have it anyway. <laughs> um, and this fabric has been around, I think it was released um, earlier in the autumn, maybe in the summer. And I've been looking at it for ages and I just thought, why don't you just get it before it sells out? Because it's not going to be around forever. And it's this really gorgeous um, fleece back sweatshirting fabric from Atelier Brunette um, in the colour night. So again, a really, really dark blue colour. I'm nearing on black. And um, yeah, I just love it. Um, I love Atelier Brunette sweatshirtings and I know they don't come around that often. I made a solar sweater by Papercut Patterns in the last lot of Atelier Brunette sweatshirting fabrics that were released. And that was a couple of years ago at least. I'll put a picture up of it. And I love it and I wear it loads and it's really nice fabric. Um, so I thought before this one, as I said, sells out, I will get some because I know I'm going to wear it and love it. Um, so yeah, I bought this fabric. I think I got one and a half metres of it from Minerva and I also got um, half metre of the matching ribbing. Um, so yeah, I'm planning to make some sort of sweatshirt and I don't know which one um, at all yet. Um, yeah, I'm still feeling a bit guilty about the purchase. I haven't got around to actually moving on from the guilty feeling and actually thinking about what to sew. But I, I'm just off the top of my head, it'll either be a Jara sweatshirt or a Linden sweatshirt or maybe another Solar sweater. Although I might make, if I did make it as a Solar sweater, I might leave off the ruffles just so it's not too similar to my other one that I made with the Atelier Brunette fabric. But yeah, it's just really um, lovely fabric. I really feel like the Atelier Brunette designs, they kind of never go out of fashion. They're kind of timeless. So that's my justification of this one anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was just kind of one of those impulse buys that I try not to do too often. But um, like I said to my husband the other day, sometimes impulse buys end up being the things you love the most and the things you wear the most. A bit like when you go to a shop, um, a clothes shop, and you try on a couple of dresses and then you bring in something for fun as well. And I often find the thing you bring in for fun ends up being the thing you like most, more than the things you thought you'd like. So if that makes sense. But anyway, that is my last um, purchase. Um, and yeah, plans to make some sort of cosy sweatshirt for winter. But yeah, so that's all my um, sewing plans. There's quite a lot of things there actually, so that'll keep me busy for a while. And I'm hoping that, yeah, they'll all turn into nice garments for my autumn wardrobe. I hope you have some lovely um, autumn sewing plans too. I really think it's such a nice time of year where you can kind of start layering garments up, getting out those tights and boots and cardigans. Yeah, I really enjoy autumn um, from a me-made wardrobe perspective. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have enjoyed the vlog, as usual, I'd love it if you would give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, then please do um, hit the subscribe button and also the um, bell notification. And then you'll um, hear when my future vlogs come out. So yeah, thanks again for watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you again soon. Bye.